Thank you for checking out this No Spoilers movie review. So let me get two things out of the way. Two apologies up front. One, I apologize if you end up hearing some people mowing the lawn in the background. Uh, hopefully that doesn't get picked up, but this is what happens when you live in a townhouse and you're making videos. Uh, the other thing is uh, I'm going to try to get my energy level to where I usually am, but I have to apologize. It might not be there. I'm kind of battling something at the moment, and um, my voice may also sound kind of different because of that. But let's move ahead and see how well I can do things. Reviewing Humanoids from the Deep, which is a 1980 film done by uh, Roger Corman Production Company, directed by Barbara Peters. And when I'm reviewing this, it is currently st it is streaming on the Shudder Horror Streaming Service. So first of all, something for people to know, if you haven't seen this movie and you're watching this review, it is a Roger Corman production. Now, if you're not familiar with Roger Corman, he does a lot of kind of like low budget, not really like good movies, but there's inspiration to him and they made enough money. I mean, he's like 94 right now and he's still making movies like this. Um, I think one of the ones that was more recent-ish that uh, actually caused some waves that people were into but was like a bad movie but like fun bad was Sharktopus. So he's still doing it. He's still making these things happen. Uh, and Humanoids from the Deep, when you watch it, I mean, going in, if you know it's a Corman film, you should know. It's going to be, like, not a good film, so I'm going to have two different star ratings at the end of this. One for an actual, like, overall film star rating, and one for, like, a bad, a fun bad movie rating. So, that's what I have to do with these types of films. So anyway, like I said, it was directed by Barbara Peters, but it was originally offered to Joe Dante. And I'm assuming that one of the reasons that was the case is because... Uh, this was in 1980. In 1978, Joe Dante did um, Piranha. Well, that's when it was released, at, at least. So being um, water-based and, um, you know, Havoc being wreaked on a town because of these water-based creatures, uh, I figured they were like, oh, well, Joe Dante's done something just like this. And I mean just like this. If you see the original Piranha and then you see Humanoids from the Deep a.k.a. Monster, um, you'll be like, these movies are very, very similar. They're very similar. I wouldn't be surprised if they basically looked at the, the, the movie and the script for Piranha and were just like, we're going to do almost the same thing, but change some stuff here and there. Which, you know, like lower budget films, independent, they do that. Um, so this, was, this film was released in Europe and Japan as the movie Monster. So in the United States, it was Humanoids from the Deep. In Japan and Europe, it was called Monster. So when I was watching the version that they have on Shudder, it says Monster, and then under it in parentheses says Humanoids from the Deep, which is really, really small, and I was kind of like, I had to get closer to the screen and strain my eyes to see that. I was like, whoa, my, you know, I should probably wear glasses, but you know. Um, but the working title when they were doing the film was called Beneath the Darkness, just so you all know. Interesting information. Uh, Roger Corman was actually uncredited on this as the executive producer, but he was. Uh, and then they do, 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 a remake of this. It, this is funny because I you would see this film and be like, this does not merit a remake. A remake of this was actually done in 1996 by Roger Corman's company. So he was just like, man, you know what I really liked? Humanoids from the Deep. You want to remake that? It was only 16 years prior, but go ahead. Um, so there was actually some controversy surrounding this film. Uh, it had to do with the actual production of it. So like I said, Barbara Peters directed it and when she directed it, like there, there were supposed to be some, uh, creature rape scenes on women because the whole tagline is like, you know, when I say no spoilers in this, like there are spoilers in the sense of whatever's in kind of like the log line or the synopsis for the film. Oh, let me fix my, my, um, yeah. There we go. A little bit. I don't know. Sorry. But um, so that's actually in the synopsis, what I'm what I'm going to say. So the, the whole thing is these creatures from the from the deep, these humanoids from the deep, uh, they kill the men and then they rape the women. So there were supposed to be uh, these creature rape scenes in the film. Now, when Barbara shot these, uh, she it was very shadowy. It was very dark because she didn't want to show it super graphically. And so I guess Corman didn't really like that, so he had a, another director go in after the fact, after the film was completed, and reshoot those rape scenes. And the guy who did it was James Spardalotti. Never even heard of this guy. 
So he reshot that. Now, a lot of the people who were involved in the film didn't know that that was going on. So when it was found out, people like Barbara Peters, the director, and uh, Ann Turley, yeah, Ann Turley, one of the main actresses in the film, said, uh, I'm not cool with this. I want my name now taken off of this. But Corman and his company refused and were just like, no. So against their own will, their names are still tied to this film. Now, I will say having seen it, um, two things. Like, I don't think the rape scenes are as messed up and graphic as doing this research would make it seem before I was watching the film. But at the same time, the rape scenes actually don't really add much of anything either. So they easily could have just stuck with whatever the, the more shadowy, um, less graphic versions were, and it would have been totally fine. My only assumption is they went with the more graphic version because they wanted nudity. They wanted it to be more lurid. You know, it was 1980. In the 80s, 70s, horror film was going for a lot of, like, more lurid things, more sexual things. So that's just my thought on it. But watching it, I was just like, it doesn't really add anything, so it doesn't even need to be there. So, I don't know. You make a decision on how you feel about it. Okay, so the town in this movie actually reminded me a lot of the town that you see in the film Dead and Buried, which I forget what director did Dead and Buried, but... I did a review for it on this channel. Go look look for it. Um, also, no spoilers. All my reviews are no spoilers. But that movie was fun. That was a good time. I actually definitely enjoyed Dead and Buried more than uh, Humanoids from the Deep. Uh, just saying. So the beginning of it's really, really hokey. Uh, it kind of starts relatively fast with the actual action to kind of like pull you in. Makes sense. A lot of the, the lower budget films feel like they have to do that. Get the gore out there. Get the creature out there. Let people know something's very awry immediately, and um, then they kind of back off a little bit and then build things back up, and then things get crazy eventually, and this kind of follows that. Uh, there, there's, a lot, there's a large theme in this of fear of industrialization. So, <clears throat> like, companies coming into smaller towns saying, oh, we're going to make these changes, we're going to start doing this, we got this technolo technological advancement that's basically going to make you obsolete what you're doing now for a job, but somehow we're going to create jobs. And this is actually a theme that you see in um, a lot of horror films that have this type of, of uh, storyline and this type of formula to it. And, um, I mean, it's a legitimate fear. It was a legitimate fear then. It's actually a very legitimate fear now because with automation, it just keeps going and going and going and progressing and progressing and progressing. So I'm kind of surprised we're not seeing a lot more of that type of theme showing up in horror again, but give it time, you know, these, these things like trends tend to recycle themselves. So it's quite possible that that's going to happen again. And I would like to see it, to be honest. I, I think it, I think it plays well in horror. It's kind of a cool theme, especially when it's tied into like a creature feature, you know, like, like what this is, that's kind of cool. Um, and it's also kind of a little bit about, uh, fighting these corporations who are coming in and they kind of have no soul. So it's kind of like they're totally driven by money. They're like, we're going to do this, that, and the other. And they make these terrible decisions based solely on money that have these terrible, in this case, ecological impacts that then become impacts to human beings, make them die. <laughs> and then it's this big fight against these people to say, hey, you know, not only are you coming in and changing things, uh, changing our way of life, which we don't like, you're taking our jobs away. And now, in horror movies, you're taking it to the crazy level of it's killing us, basically. And that's very much a play in this. And it works. I mean, I think it works. But like I said, it's very much Piranha-like. If you've already sent, seen Piranha, I don't know that you need to see this. But eh, there's fun to be had in this film, I will say. The acting's bad. Um, it's not the worst, but it's also, if you think about low-budget horror in 1980, you probably have a good idea going into it what it's going to be about kind of like so you know um you can see actually some jaws elements in this film which is important to also note you know piranha was in 1978 jaws was in 1975 so five years prior you have jaws then three years after that you have piranha then two years after that you have humanoids from the deep so obviously humanoids from the deep is very heavily uh leaning on what it's seen in piranha but also what's seen in jaws and i'm sure piranha was heavily leaning on what it saw in Jaws. So it's kind of this, you know, there, there's a horror film, you see it a lot, there's a horror film that has a huge impact, it's very popular, and then other people keep taking parts of that or taking up large chunks of that and making their own version, uh, but just changing it a little bit and trying to make money off of that. 
So, humanoids from the deep. And actually, it's funny because if you think about it that way, it's like Jaws, Piranha, humanoids from the deep. It decreases in quality and interest, basically. It's like Jaws was really good. Piranha was actually pretty solid. And humanoids from the deep is not really good, but kind of fun. So, but that's how it usually goes. Uh, practical effects actually don't look too bad in this. I want to say that from the standpoint of the kills in the film, um, they're, they're relatively quick. They're, they don't have a whole lot of detail, but for what they are, they don't look that bad. And I was actually kind of impressed with that. Uh, the other thing is the, the creatures themselves for a lower budget 1980s creature feature like this, you know, something from the deep, um, think about what you would expect based off what I just said and think maybe slightly better than what your expectation would be. It's not great. They don't look great, but they don't look terrible either. There are some uh, elements of the design of the creatures that are kind of funny and weird and just don't don't play all that well, but there are some aspects that kind of do play well. And they always look like shiny and wet and like slimy, which I think that always plays well, especially with like sea creatures. So I like that aspect of it. Um... I wrote down, man, these fishermen only drink and fish. And I'm not even sure these people sleep at all. That's another thing. I, you never see anyone sleeping. You pretty much never even see anyone eating in this film. It's just like drinking and fishing and then worrying about and dealing with this giant cre sea creature issue. That's pretty much it. I just found that kind of funny. The scientific examination scene, which there always has to be one in these types of film, that gets actually pretty funny. I really did enjoy that scene. The um, the dialogue within it is particularly what's good about it. So if you haven't watched it, just wait for that scene. It's really good. If you have watched it, you know what I'm talking about. Put some comments down there. Let me know your thoughts. And then the last thing I put down is that the, the end of it is by far the best portion of this film. It does have a, a relatively good payoff at the end with the salmon festival in this town, which, not a spoiler because it's in the synopsis of it up front. Um, yeah, things get crazy. It kind of seems like maybe they go too far and it, it goes on for too long. But man, I just remember watching that scene and just being like, uh, they set up a lot of stuff in the scene to knock it down and destroy it, basically. But it's like mass chaos, total havoc. It's a pretty good time. It's pretty cool. And and like I said, like that's clearly the best part of the film. It is a bit of a payoff because honestly, up until that point, I was like, Meh, I don't really know how I feel about this. I was kind of going thumbs down on it until that happened. So good way to kind of wrap it up. Anyway, uh, like I told you, I'm going to do two different star ratings on this. So it's always out of five stars with half stars in play. So for my straight up film stars rating, I give you a, a one and a half star as an overall film compared to all films. One and a half stars for trying, for effort, and the end scene. And the creatures didn't look too terrible for the time period. Now for like fun bad movie ratings, I'm going to give it a three I would have given it a two and a half if it weren't for the last like 10 minutes of the film. So it would have been two and a half, but I'm going to give it a three straight up. Uh, I would recommend it for people who like creature features, especially like low budget, older creature features. I think it's a pretty good time, especially people who like specifically aquatic creature feature films, which I feel like is like a sub sub genre because like creature features, the sub genre of horror and then aquatic creature feature would be sub sub genre. Let's start talking about sub-sub-genres. What do we call those? Multi-sub-genres? I don't know. Micro-sub-genres? Maybe. I don't know. Let's uh, let's talk down here just about the film in general uh, or whatever you want to talk about. Um, please do me a quick favor. Hit that subscribe. It really does help my channel out, and I really appreciate it. It also motivates me to keep these things going and keep them good because I feel like I'm doing a solid job. But uh, you can do likes if you want to, but the big thing is the subscribe. Uh, thank you very much, and the other thing is... Keep it brutal.